Hi everyone, I'm Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop. Do I have mask lines? I think I do. Well, that's because here in the Northeast, uh, wearing masks is not do it if you want to, it's mandatory. So I'm getting ahead of myself because actually I'm excited to tell you that today is the first day that thrift shops are open in the state of New Jersey. They've been open for over a week in Pennsylvania in, in my area but they opened today in Jersey for the first time. Um, and I'm ready. I'm actually here a half an hour early and there are people fiddling around in the parking lot. I'm really anxious to get inside. Now, uh, I mentioned masks. I, I've already had mine on and I think I have my mask lines. Um, we have to wear them in all businesses here in the Northeast, New Jersey and Pennsylvania. So I will have my mask on I also have my own handy wipes and some spray <laughs> and a cheese stick. So I'm ready. I don't need anything else. Uh, social, distancing, social distancing, they only allow 50% occupancy. Occupus, occupancy. Pency. I can't say it. Uh, in the building at one time. So uh, I'm shortly going to get off this thing and go get in line. Now, don't expect me to do any filming right away because if you know me, I get inside and I zip, 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 zip. Maybe I'll do some filming afterwards and later on in the day in some other thrift shops. But this one is just going to be too exciting. There are people already lined up. They've got balloons out. Where's the marching band? And of course, at the end of this video, I'm going to be showing you some of the things I hope I will have thrifted today. So sit back wherever you are and enjoy, I hope, me as I go shopping for vintage things, mostly from the 1920s, 30s, and 40s. But I will occasionally, as you know, dip into the 70s and back into the Victorian era. Okay, let's go see what we can find. I'm so excited! J-E-L-L-O. Anybody know the original flavors of Jell-O? Mm-hmm. Believe it or not, lime was not one of the original flavors. What year was lime Jell-O introduced? Anybody know? Mm-hmm. Now don't Google it. Here's a holiday treat for your family they sure won't want to exchange. It's Christmassy jellied mincemeat made with rich red cherry Jell-O. Just prepare cherry jello as usual, and when slightly thickened, fold in one cup of moist minced meat. Chill until firm in individual molds, and garnish with rum flavored sweetened whipped cream. Good? Why, it's the zestiest holiday dessert that ever made Christmas merry. Sparkling red cherry jello, luscious with tempting minced meat. All six delicious jello flavors fit right in the holiday mood strawberry, raspberry, cherry, orange, lemon, and lime. They're rich with locked-in goodness, and they're bright and gay as a Christmas tree. So look for those big red letters on the box. They spell Jell-O, and Jell-O is a registered trademark of the General Foods Corporation. J-E-L-L-O! Would you like to see what's in this bag that I just bought? Here I go. Okay. This is a tea kettle in corn flour, blue, corning ware. These do sell for, oh, 25, 30, 35 bucks. This one's 5.95. It needs to be cleaned, but there's no damage on it. You don't see these very often, so that's coming with me. Okay. 
Okay, so there's no mystery. You already know what it is. But uh, here it is. $5.95. So I'm going to get it all cleaned up. Which won't be too difficult. And as I said, they sell... Well, you'll see sometimes these listed for $50, $60. I usually see them sell in the in the $30, $35 range. So that's probably what I can anticipate getting for this. You'll see it again once I get it all cleaned up. Now, here's the answer to the Jell-O question. Well, the original gelatin dessert began in Leroy, New York in 1897 after Pearl Bixby Waite and wife Mary trademarked the name for a product made from strawberry, raspberry, orange, and lemon flavoring. When did lime come along? Not until 1930. And our grandparents used to listen to the Jack Benny program sponsored by J-E-L-L-O. The Jell-O program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston and Phil Harris and his orchestra. The orchestra opens the program with Alabama Barbecue from the 27th edition of the Cotton Club Parade. Now I'm off to my next couple of thrift shops and we'll see what we can find. I'm having a wonderful time. I hope you are too. Thanks for going along with me. Well, I'm in one of those thrift shops where... They kind of know what's good and they put it up for auction, you know, silent auction. So it kind of makes it a little depressing because you know that anything really, really good, you're just not going to be able to stumble upon unless you outsmart them. But anyway, here's some of the things that they've got. There's some uh, cranberry uh, coin dot back there. And look at all this uh, blue opalescent Fenton. You try to get up there on it. I think all of that stuff, last time I looked, uh, the high bid was about a hundred bucks. Lionel uh, train items. And uh, there's some Edison cylinders. And, oh, I guess I'm supposed to be quiet. I'm not gonna be quiet. Anyway. Eh, old typewriter. That's a reproduction rocker, not an antique. A nice uh, 1930s uh, Schiffer robe kind of a thing. There's a antique oak turn of the century dresser, an old school desk. But if you're not familiar with it, the way it works is they have this book. Let's see how much that blue opalescent Fenton is going is is going for at the moment number 69 all right let's go over here to the book and look up number 69 number 69 number 68 number 69 the high bid right now is a hundred and thirty dollars so what happens is they, they put like, they leave it out for two or three weeks. And uh, that's it. The highest bid walks away with it. I guess you could get some deals, but knowing me, I would bid on something and forget about it. I guess they call you. I don't know, I'm kind of a here and now, right now kind of a guy. I want it right now. So I don't usually do these silent auction things. But anyway. I did find some things in my little basket, and I will show them to you when we get out in the car. Look at the baby buggy. Wow. Love it. Hmm. Good stuff thrift. I'll be the judge of that. Let's go. Well, that thrift store was poo, poo, poo. Actually, because... Well, it's the first day in New Jersey and people are lined up and so some of the places I skipped and went back to, um, 
it's just fun and exciting being out. And again, I'm taking precautions as we are, as we have to. But I'll show you some things now. I know a lot of you like the kitchen counter thrift hauls because everything is clean and sparkly and I get real close with the camera, but I like to shake it up every once in a while. So I'm going to quickly flash to you or at you what I bought today. You'll see it again in better clarity and state of cleanliness when I finally get it inside. So none of this is up for sale yet. I'll let you know when it will be. Okay. So the first thrift store that I went into this morning, but once I got inside, I had to grab a cart and fly, and I mean fly, and I was the first one to see this and grab it. Now it's the Pyrex Butterprint Refrigerator Dish, and it's in really good condition. There are two chips, a tiny one right there on the corner of the lid. Okay, these lids are often chipped. Eh. The dish itself has really what I would call a flea bite right there. It's, it's tiny and it's really smooth, uh, so you'll see it later. But you can see the colors are really good. Uh, there's no heavy wear to the graphic and that's what really counts on these. And it is nice and clean. And I don't remember what they sell for, but it was only, I think, $4, so I know I'll do okay with it. This, I'm just gonna take a chance on it. It's not old, it's a modern piece of art glass, but it's really pretty iridescent, and it's got the glass drizzle on it. It is signed on the bottom. I, I'm not, I don't think that's a, I don't think it's a date. I'll show you later. Um, but that was $5, just a nice piece of uh, contemporary art glass. And then, thinking ahead for the fall season, this will come back when I show you my items for sale next autumn. Uh, a uh, daisy and button glass shoe in Amberina. Oh, that was two dollars. And then I, for whatever reason, hardly ever find... What is it? That's right, it's called Goofus Glass. Goofus glass. Goofus glass almost always has loss, and by loss I mean paint loss. This was cheap pressed glass, crystal clear glass, and then they would spray on uh, the red color first and then the gold color afterwards. They just spray it on almost like spray paint. It does not hold up very well over time, so Collectors of Goofus Glass, um, if you're looking for a Goofus Glass that's perfect, you probably have a very small collection because it's really hard to find Goofus Glass that is perfect. This was $2.99. It doesn't have a lot of great value, but since I hardly ever find Goofus Glass, I think it's maybe only the second piece I've ever bought. I went ahead and got it anyway, and I'm probably going to sell it in my autumn sale because it has kind of an autumn-y feel, I think. Many companies made it, and it was produced around the same time as uh, Carnival Glass, turn of the century, into through the teens, and, and maybe dips into the early 1920s a little bit. And it's just trying to emulate more expensive glass of that era, uh, and this would be the equivalent of really going into like a dollar store today and buying a very inexpensive piece of glass, but there are Goofus glass collectors. And then in Goodwill, and you'll have to wait till later to really see these unless you look them up. These are made by the Jeanette Company and they were produced in the 1950s. They're little dresser uh, containers. Dresser, dresser jars, and they have, uh, it's iridescent. Well, you can't see that. Okay, let's, let's get one out of there. Hold on. I see these mistakenly listed all the time as carnival glass, and they are not carnival glass. Ooh, it's dusty. Okay, so I have two of them, and it's a cute little fawn, I guess, a deer, a fawn, and it's um, in that, kind of that floor gold iridescence that Jeanette did in mid-century. And you can see it has a real mid-century look to it. So 
It's not 1930s carnival glass, uh, but it is iridescent. So you'll see it, the two of them, in better condition when I get them cleaned up. I paid, it was $5.49, and, but they were on half price. Two of them, and, and they're not uh, broken until I break them. They're not broken or chipped. What do they sell for? Well, it's one of those funny things. You see quite a range sometimes, $15 to $30. Um, and so it was, it's always fun to find two of anything. I talked before about why iridescent glass of the mid-century is not carnival glass. So I won't go into, I won't pontificate on that this time. You guys probably are, oh, look at this. This is coming back in my Christmas sale. So aha, I am gonna do a Christmas in July sale. This is beautiful. Look at this. It's green, pine cones. Uh, as far as I know, it's unmarked. I haven't peeled that off yet. And But it's good porcelain, and I'll study it later to see if there's a signature or a date or anything. Sometimes it's hard to tell when these things were made. It's very well painted, and that's something that you're going to see more of when I do Christmas in July. And that will be coming up soon because we're already in the middle of June. I always dig through the CD collection. See, I always dig through the CD department when I'm in there. And I picked up uh, American Legends. I probably already have all these recordings, but who can turn down Ethel Merman? Now, don't make fun of me, okay? Variety is the spice of life. <laughs> I like me some Ethel. Am I to blame if life proved unfortunate? Just soon became a fool with a torch in it, leaving me groping and hoping in vain. My future's in the blue, all red. This is Noritake, one dollar. It's tiny lusterware with black trim. What is it? Is it a little tiny individual ashtray? You know, for the bridge table? Probably. You couldn't fit very many peanuts in there. I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but I'm going to save it for next Halloween and do something with it. All right. Uh, I don't know anything about this. I've never heard of it before. It's made in Japan. And it says M A R U R I, Marori. And it's just a cute little bisque figurine. Probably paid too much for it. It was $2. It's just a, I need to clean him. A pensive little boy, just kind of looking around. But he does need to be cleaned. I went ahead and bought it. I'll look it up later. I pay two dollars, maybe it's worth two dollars. And then a few more thing a few more things that I'm gonna save for my autumn sale. I bought two plates in amber gold encrusted elegant depression glass. Yes, I bought just two. Why just two? I'll tell you later. And then also a beautiful amber console bowl. This is also from the depression, made by one of the good depression glass companies. It doesn't fit. It's not supposed to sit on this. I just did that for the beauty of it. And again, these pieces are gonna be in my autumn sale. And then for myself, I don't usually buy clothing, but I sometimes look at men's clothing and uh, sometimes you'll find a piece of men's clothing that is in really in excellent condition. So I bought this short sleeve shirt for myself. Um, I wear a small, sometimes a medium, and it's sometimes difficult to find that size. Everything is just so big. But you guys will have to tell me. 
Um, is this out of style? I'm not a big fashionista kind of guy, so if I'm like 10 years out of style on this, you'll have to tell me. Uh, not that I care, but it's just a pretty summer shirt and it's really clean. I don't even think it's, you know, you look at the collar, you look under the arm, you look at the, you look at the cuffs and, th well this doesn't have cuffs. You know how to look for wear. It's really clean. It's three dollars. So I'm gonna wash that and I'll be able to wear it. Okay, it's 1225. I am going to go to lunch, turn my car around, leave Pennsylvania, go back into Jersey. Oh, we started in Jersey. I crossed the river into Pennsylvania. I'm going to cross the river back into New Jersey and hit some other thrift shops because it's only 1230. Because the day is young and I'm having a good time and finding really cool stuff. So thanks for coming along. I usually pack my lunch, but today I'm treating myself to one of these little salads at Wendy's. You ever get one? It's the small size. They're not cheap, but they're good. Oh, it's apple pecan chicken with candied pecans on the top, apples, some kind of cheese crumbled in it, and vinaigrette. It's really good. Now I recognized this right away as Franciscan Coronado, and it sells pretty well. I've sold several pieces of it in the blue color, but sadly this teapot was chipped right on the sweet spot. And I don't really like selling chipped pottery, so I decided I would leave it there. 
Oh well. Well everyone, it's been a long day. I'm back, it's four o'clock. I left the house at eight, so that's an eight hour day. My day isn't over yet. I just wanna show you a couple more things. Now, early this morning, I found that Butterprint refrigerator dish. I thrifted all day, and on my way back, I decided I'd stop at that thrift shop. I decided I'd stop at that thrift shop for a second time, and I'm glad I did. Because upon going in a second time, found this and this. <laughs> so, um, missing the, the second one of these, that would make a full set of four refrigerator dishes. Uh, so, I'm probably going to just piece these out in three separate auctions since I don't have a complete set, and I'll let folks bid on these individually to complete their own sets. But boy, was it worth going back. $2.99 and $1.99. And then also a few more Christmas things, which you will see when I do Christmas in July. But first, a quick peek. There's a little pixie sitting there, cold painted red, and you probably can't tell because of the light. His face is actually pearlescent. So I don't believe that, uh, so that's original, I don't think his face was ever painted. This finish is different from this, although you can't see because of the light. You'll see him up close Christmas in July. And then lastly, uh, a pink Santa Claus on a sleigh. This is made by Westmoreland Glass. It's a little candy dish. And uh, this reminds me so much of the German hard candy that we get at Christmas time. That's part of the part of German uh, Christmas traditions. Uh, they're usually little candy toys or little uh, statues, and sometimes they're on sticks uh, to lick. Other times it's just hard pieces of candy, but that's what this reminds me of. And it's Santa on a, on a sleigh, and you'll see him next month. Okay, I had a good time today. I'm glad you came with me. Nothing that you saw today is up for auction yet but it soon will be. And how will you know? Well, you'll know when I show it to you again on the Kitchen Counter Thrift Hall. So I'm Scott from the old Curiosity Shop saying thanks for watching and so long for now. Oh, wait a minute. Did I see? I did. Somebody probably wants to make an appearance. He's not always grumpy. See, when he doesn't have his, uh, when, he's, when I'm not competing for his toy. Okay. My supervisor wants to say hello. Say hello, Salem. Are you mad? He's mad. <laughs> he's not mad, he's purring. <laughs>